Welcome to Wolf 359. This is the audio log of communications officer Doug Eiffel. I am speaking from the comms room of the USS Hephaestus station. Welcome to day 448 of our orbit around uh, Red Dwarf Star Wolf 359. Today's weather report, pretty nominal. Surface temperatures averaging at about, oh, a crisp 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Instruments are picking up less than 10% chance of stellar flares. Just another happy, sunny day out here, seven and a half light years away from Earth. Minkowski and I finally cleared up that problem with the temperature on the station. All the climate control systems are back to normal, and our stalwart autopilot Hera promises she'll be a little less gung-ho in her efforts to conserve power. You know, I understand that as an artificial intelligence, it's difficult for her to remember that human beings can't function at 400 below zero. That's fine, everyone makes mistakes, but if she could stop talking about my fragile, carbon-based, uncomfortably liquid body, it'd be a real breakthrough for human-AI relations. Speaking of scientific advancement, it's been three days since Hilbert's come out of his lab. I think this is the fourth time since mission launch he's been sitting with us at dinner, suddenly yelled, of course, and ran off. I can't understand what Hilbert's saying half the time anyway. It's just as well, I'm still banned from the lab. You accidentally knock over one vat of acid and almost burn a hole in the hull and suddenly you're... Well, yeah, I guess that's fair. Whatever you're up to, Dr. Hilbert, best of luck. I gotta be careful with these. Minkowski confiscated another cigarette carton today. You'd think that after a year and a half on this tin can, our resident Stasi agent would let up. I get it, cigarettes are contraband, but it's not like if she let me have one, I'd immediately light it and accidentally set the station's air supply on fire. Again. The people on this station have serious trust issues. That makes the tally 17 cartons that she's confiscated and... One, two, three, still tucked in the back of the auxiliary comms panel. Safe and sound. I gotta stay sharp about where I leave these things though. I know I can't actually smoke them. I, I just like being able to have them in my mouth. I like the taste. Oh yeah, eat your heart out, you succulent rat-killing tar. Alrighty folks, let's see if we can actually get some work done, shall we? Our mission tonight is the same as last night, and the night before that, and the previous 400 nights unto the end of my attention span. Scan the heavens for any signs of intelligent life. Yesterday, we spent a very relaxing three hours listening to absolute silence coming from the Theta Nu Quadrant, and that was great. That was just great. Today, how about we take a look at what's going on around the Alpha Psi Sector? Is today the day we make first contact? What do you say, Alpha Psi 1? Outstanding. Alpha Psi Sector bearing 1? No contact. What do you say, Alpha Psi 2? Bearing 2, same as it ever was. How are you feeling, Bearing 3? Well, folks, I don't need to tell you that we are in for one exciting evening. I mean, I don't know if you have any dinner plans, but... What the hell? D did I just hear... I thought I just heard something for a moment there. I'm Hello? Alpha Psi Sector, bearing three. Is anybody out there? Does anybody copy? No, I suppose not. I must be hearing things. I mean, hearing things is my job, but you know what I mean. You know what? I, I think I need some coffee. Yeah, th that'll make things better. I'll, I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back, and I have coffee. Of course, it's not actually coffee. It's mostly blended seaweed with some proteins and stimulants. Helbert says he got it as close to the taste of coffee grounds as he could, but that's not saying much. Calling it coffee helps? Speaking of the good doctor, I passed by his lab on the way to the kitchen. Some pretty weird noises coming from inside, even for him. Check this out. So that's happening. Once again, I hope you know what you're doing, Dr. Hilbert. Oh no, looks like we have an unscheduled caller on line one, dear listeners. Eiffel? Yeah, Minkowski? Excuse me? How may I be of service, Commander Minkowski, sir? Don't tell me you need more cigarettes already. I gave you a full carton this afternoon. Very funny. Eiffel, did you read your copy of Price and Carter? My copy of what? Price and Carter's Deep Space Survival Procedure Protocol Manual. Was that one of those mandatory mission training things? Yes. In that case, yes. I definitely did. Did you now? Because I happened to find your copy of the DSS PPM floating in the observation deck. Oh? Still in its plastic wrapping. Oh. In that case, I've been busy. Get to it, Eiffel. We may be eight light years from Earth, but we still do things by the book. This book, in fact. I want you to have it read by 0600 tomorrow. Gee, Commander, I'd love to do that, but I've got all of this deep space survey to do tonight. Very, very complicated technical stuff that requires my full attention, so... If you can't recite that entire book backwards and forwards by tomorrow, I'll not only confiscate the cigarettes you've got in the comms panel, I'll make you watch as I flush them out the airlock. One by one. Well, clearly this is an important matter that requires my immediate attention. Glad we understand each other. And I'm so glad that your shriveled husk of a dictator's heart is as warm as a decompression chamber. Ugh. All right, let's get this over with. Ira? Yes, Officer Eiffel? Have you got this Jimmy Carter thing in your databanks? Bryson Carter's Deep Space Survival Procedure Protocol Manual is among the files I have access to. Can you please reproduce the contents of that file? Certainly. Would you like me to broadcast this throughout all of the station? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Let's, uh, let's have this be a just the two of us, totally secret, never tell Commander Minkowski thing, all right? (laughs) Very well. Ready to begin? Ready as I'll ever be. Take me away, sweetheart. Price and Carter's Deep Space Survival Procedure Protocol Manual. Congratulations on your assignment to a deep space outpost. Whether your stay is of a scientific, exploratory, or disciplinary nature, we hope that you enjoy a peaceful, restive, minimal casualty residency in your spacecraft of choice. To maximize your chances of a successful return to Earth with all your limbs and faculties intact, please display a strict adherence to the following 1,001 survival tips. One thousand and, oh, it's the extra one that's really annoying. Deep space survival tip number one. Always read the instructions before operating any piece of machinery. Deviating from this might result in the loss of valuable equipment, which could lead to heavy fines or death. Deep space survival tip number two. Begin every day with a few minutes of exercise. Isometric exercises are no harder to do in zero gravity they are on Earth, and just as rewarding. Jeez, I'm gonna need some more coffee. Deep space survival tip number three. Spacewalks are a serious matter. They are very <sighs> delicate operations filled with hazards, so only use them as a source of amusement if you are really bored. I think we really go for one of those just about now. Deep space survival tip number four. Conserve your oxygen. Even in environments with an air recycling system, oxygen can be limited. So keep your breathing at a slow, steady pace. Remain calm. Failing to remain calm 
could result in your grizzly grizzly's death. So whatever you do, do not panic. Panicking will only serve to accelerate your oxygen consumption and make your already likely demise a certainty. If you want to avoid dying painfully alone in the cold darkness of space, gasping desperately as freezing oblivion silences your pathetic hopes and dreams, relax. Deep space survival tip number five. Remain positive at all times. Maintain a cheerful attitude even in the face of adversity. Remember... When you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. But when you're crying, you're in violation of fleet-wide morale codes and should report to your superior officer for disciplinary action. Deep space survival tip number six. Oh my God, there it is again. Vera, shut up. Hygiene. That's definitely a transmission. I might be able to clean it up a bit, actually. Come here, you. Hold on. No, 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 come back! Damn it, I've lost the signal again. But I'm not crazy. There's definitely something out there. Come on, talk to me, whoever you are. I say again, Alpha Psi Sector, bearing three, do you copy? What was... What? What was that? Are, are we seriously blowing up now? Is there a survival tip about what to do for blowing up? What the hell was that? Eiffel, were you smoking again? I was not. If I come down there and find a single burnt mat... <coughs> Eiffel's not at fault, Commander. Loud noise came from my laboratory. Apologies. Didn't mean to cause distraction. Dr. Hilbert? Are you okay? Naturally. Why is state of my health in question? That was a rather loud explosion. Oh, erroneous assumption. Loud noise was not explosion. Then what was it? Don't know. Something else. Not explosion. Something... Less destructive. A hairdryer, perhaps. Dr. Hilbert, is anything around you on fire? Definitely not. Well, probably. Too busy with experimental sample to look around. Rigorous observation cycle must devote full attention. Hilbert out. Hira? The current temperature in the laboratory is 210 degrees Fahrenheit. And rising. And I'm guessing that the fire containment system... It is still out of order due to last week's electrical outage. Great. Well, I guess we gotta break into his lab and make sure he doesn't die. Hey, I'm still banned from those premises, and last I checked, he outranks me. This is all you. Eiffel, a man's life might be at risk. If only we didn't do things by the book around here... If you're not down at the lab in five minutes, I am going to make uh, sure what's that, that your Commander? rations for oh, the rest of the mission are nothing but... The fire but, must oh, be interfering with the intercom this, system. Eiffel. Are you there? Do you around. copy? I swear to Where's God. that Eiffel. button? Oh, Eiffel! Yes. Eiffel! <laughs> Have fun with the rescue up. <sighs> Alone at last. Would you like me to resume the reading where we left off? As scintillating as that sounds, Hira, I think we can just leave it. Are you certain? Yeah, I got the gist of it. Besides, I feel like there's something I'm... Forgetting right that. What are you? Who's out there? <clears throat> Hello, does anyone copy? This is Douglas Eiffel aboard the USS Hephaestus Station. Please respond. Again, is anybody out there? Please respond. Oh, God. Oh, sweet, merciful, tap-dancing zombie chorus girls. It's an old radio broadcast from Earth. A signal sent out... God, this must be decades old. All this time, it's just been traveling through space, bouncing from star to star. I mean, just imagine. Of all the odds, of all the space, it just happens to run into us. You gotta wonder how many things this song has seen. Well, it looks like I didn't stumble onto alien life today. But you know, as consolation prizes go, a reminder that Earth is out there, waiting, with all its hi-fis and smoking sections and triple white chocolate mochas with whipped cream. That ain't half bad. 
Well, until we meet again, this is Hephaestus Station Comms Officer Doug Eiffel signing off. I should probably go make sure Hilbert isn't burning to death. Eh, I'll go after this song is over. This has been Wolf 359, written and directed by Gabrielle Urbina. The roles of Eiffel and Hilbert were played by Zach Valenti. The role of Minkowski was played by Emma Scherzarko. And the role of Hira was played by Michaela Sui. Original music by Alan Rohde. And audio recording by Jared Paul. Tonight's space transmission was The Entertainer by Scott Joplin. Want more tips on how to survive in the cold, unforgiving void of space? Visit wolf359.fm or follow us on Twitter at Wolf359Radio for more information on our show.